Here I have the Exter 3.0 Parliament Wallet. Lots of improvements here, along with the new thinner tracking card. Watch this review. Welcome to Wallatopia. Glad to have you here. Be sure to go register at wallatopia.info. You'll see the thing down here below. Today we're going to review the Exter 3.0 Parliament Wallet with the tracker that they've got. It's a bifold, and so I'm kind of excited. So let's get into this. So it comes in two pieces, the tracker, which is very thin. We'll talk about that, as well as the wallet itself. Always comes in a very nice sturdy box that Exter provides. It's nice embossing on the front here. We get into it. This is the matte blue color. I just really like this matte uh, color that they have. And so with that, we'll set aside the wallet box and look at what we have here. So this is a box wallet. Again, it's uh, very similar to several that are out there. The two primary which are Exter and Secret. And so the Parliament, as we've done in a previous review of their 2.0 version, it is a bifold. It opens up like this. Uh, kind of like in a book, and it provides uh, several features on it. But let's take a look, closer look at it here. This uh, really is nice by way of the finish and the fit of it. They've made some improvements, which we'll talk about here. And it uh, just provides a level of kind of luxury that is nice if you wanted to take this out of the town or you are a professional in your daily work life and you want to take something out that's kind of fun and innovative with the technology that's provided in here. So we'll uh, get into the features here very soon, like this. And with that, we'll get into the feature review of the Extra Parliament 3.0 wallet with the tracker. With this wallet, we can see that uh, it is a bifold because it opens up here. On the exterior, we don't have any features here on the front, but on the back we do. There is a card slot here. And this card slot is where you actually insert the tracker card, or you can use it for other credit cards or other cards, uh, or both. Uh, I've done a long-term carry test on an Extra 3.0, and I had the tracker card in the back as well as a card that went in here. Now if we open it up, immediately on the left hand side we have two card slots here. Each card slot can hold one to two, definitely one to begin with. It takes a little stretching to get more than that. And these slots here are RFID protected. Yeah, I know. We'll talk about that later. Now here is the box itself. Now before we get into the box where the cards go in here, we'll talk about the band in the front. Now this is a, a cash band that you can put cash in here. Uh, I don't carry a lot of cash, and so I typically put additional cards here, so it gives you greater capacity. Now, if we get into the box itself, we can see that it has the button down here, and you push that, and it triggers up the cards that are inside. Now, they give you some demo cards here, which is clever. It talks about their story, the quality of the leather, quick access to the user manual versus the QR code, and so forth. And uh, it, it demonstrates the number you can get in here, which is, if you have non-embossed cards, you can get six. So if we talk about this, here is where the cards go into the box itself. And so you have six, you know, four to six, depending on embossed, not embossed. You've got two slots here, slot in the back, trigger down below, and your ability to store cash or cards here. And that's a quick review of the features of the Extra Parliament 3.0 wallet. Now to the card and cash insertion test. You saw that we got nine cards plus five slips of cash in this, and that includes six non-embossed cards. Embossed cards is what it looks like this, where you've got raised letters and numbers on a card, usually when they would stamp the card before they actually started to print them on, and that creates additional height on the, on the card itself, which means that it limits the amount of cards you can actually put in here. So with my own experience, with a couple embossed cards, one or two, I've gotten four to five cards in here, but if they're non-embossed, you can get a full six. Now the leather uh, will stretch, and so you will be able to get more than just one card on this inner slot here for these, these pieces here. And again, like I mentioned, this uh, strap here, which they say can be used for cash, you can also use cards there just fine too. Now the quality to, is really good. This is designed in the Netherlands. It's assembled in India, but I'm sure parts come from all over the world. This is Italian leather. Now there's no word on the type, but I'm going to venture that it's top grain leather. And uh, one thing that's improved, especially over the 2.0 wallet, is the integrity of the box structure in here. It's stronger. It's made out of fully anodized aluminum, 
And that provides really more confidence that it won't collapse or break. Because remember, one of the concerns with these cards, or with these box cards, is that they can collapse this way. Uh, and that's especially if you keep them in your back pocket, recommending you really don't put them in your back pocket. And so that's really good there too. There are also a lot of uh, concerns about the trigger mechanism here. That this trigger mechanism over time would break, because it can go laterally, it can break, whatever. On the 3.0 version, it's made from a single piece of material. So it makes it more smooth and less clanky when you're pressing the button. And it is really more smooth. And so with that, it uh, it has this, this new inner coating in the box as well, so that as you're pushing the trigger and it's extracting the cards, the cards do come out a bit further. And we can take a look at that and see as we get to our cards. Let's get six of them here. Let's put them in. And they go in nicely. Uh, really, not a lot of effort to put them in, but they provide really good holding capability, so they're just not going to come flying out. I mean, they will if you really do it. But uh, if you do the extraction, they come out a lot further. And one thing that's interesting here is that if you see the separation of the cards, the amount of space between them, this is more important than you think. And not all box wallets demonstrate that, especially the knockoffs. But this one is good. So it not only extracts the cards up further to be able to gain access to them, it really does, but it provides a good separation between the cards so you're able to get to the cards you want in the stack quicker. Now with the new inner coating in here, it also provides RFID protection. Uh, I know, I know, but they don't have that on the back. There's no RFID here in the back. So that's okay, because if you want to put access cards in here, I think that's fine. So now, let's actually take a look inside the box here. Let's take this out and take a look. Now you can see in the inside of the box that it has a what appears to be a fully contained singular mechanism with the sweep. And the sweeps, the teeth on the sweep are a little different, which I think is what contributes to the extraction depth or, or you know the, the amount of exposure as well as the separation between the cards. And on the left-hand side is where you see the <clears throat> friction point. So as the cards are pushed out via the trigger and that sweep arm, it's not going to shoot them out. It actually provides that friction. So it not, not only helps push them out more uniformly, it keeps them in the box so they don't fall out. And that is a great piece in there for uh, an improvement over the 2.0 box to the 3.0 box. The wallet is $79. Uh, configured with the tracker that we have here, that brings it to $118. Now from a usability perspective, um, it's, uh, the, uh, we talked about the embossed and, the embossed and non-embossed cards. And really, that's a known thing with these box cards and not something to be really worried about. So we're going to take out this little tracker here. And you can see that, and I don't have the comparison, but this 3.0 tracker is significantly smaller compared to the 2.0 tracker. It's much thinner, which uh, of course is something you want. Because where they suggest you put this is in this back slot here. Now, it is a, a tracker that is powered by Chipolo and it provides a phone app for you and you actually marry this to your phone app uh, via Bluetooth and that's how it picks it up. And with that, it provides the ability to, uh, to be on and is trackable for two months on a three hour charge and that charge is provided through solar. There's a solar panel right here which actually provides that capability. So through three hours, you'll get to two months worth of tracking. Now the only issue is can you really you know, spend and remember to charge it when the time comes. Now the range is only good up to 200 feet if you want to ring it from your wallet, which you can. So if you misplace it, all of a sudden you leave a restaurant you're not sure, get on your app, hit ring, and it will ring and you'll be able to go retrieve it. It's kind of nice. And, and it actually acts as a voice, it's a voice activated device too, which is kind of fun. Now it does have a worldwide lost and found capability too. And, uh, and so depending on where you travel, what you do, you know, you do have to take into consideration that, uh, that this does add a little bit of bulk to your wallet, but if you find this feature incredibly valuable to you, then it's definitely worth your while because of the technology. The measurements on it is 4.1 by 2.5 by 0.4. Now the expanded use of quality materials and the continued development of the more robust systems developed in this wallet is really a nice advancement from this company. And they're really moving quickly into this tracking business, like with this Chipolo card. Uh, that we see with all kinds of wallets uh, kind of doing this. And it is a natural step for most companies really trying to incorporate technology. I'm sure you've seen wild technology incorporated into wallets that make you wonder, is that really a wallet or is it just you know a piece of technology masquerading as a wallet? But this is a natural step. And as the size of these 
uh, tracking technologies go down, it will become, I think, more common in wallets as we go forward. So now let's get into the final score. For quality, a four. For price, a two. And without the tracker, I'd say it's probably a three. For features, a four. Usability, a four. And perception, a four. That gives us a final score of 36 out of 50. Technology seems to improve with this. I enjoy what they've been doing with this wallet. It's been getting better and better. Look at these other videos. See if they're interesting to you. We'll talk to you soon again. Thanks. Bye.